Hey, hi there. It's so nice to see you again. In the previous tutorial, we left off somewhere around here. So we are writing the plugin code. We made some checks. We renamed some variables and finally assigned the value to, to our target. So in this episode, we are finally um, uploading the plugin to the server and trying it out for the first time. So let's do just that. First thing, uh, go to your uh, Visual Studio back and right click on your project name and click on rebuild. Then the next thing you want to do is go to Solution Explorer, right click and select open folder in File Explorer. Uh, just to check that everything is here. So um, there should be a bin folder and a debug folder and right within here you have your newly built DLL file. This is your plugin assembly, it, what, what, that, that's how it's called. And now uh, that you have it here, you can open XRAM Toolbox. It's a tool we downloaded a couple of sessions ago. And you can search for plugin registration. Uh, if you don't see it here, you can download it from Tool Library. Click it and connect to the organization. Click on yes. And it says no connections. Let's fix that. New connection wizard. And then you can go to your CRM and just copy the URL you have here in the bar. So copy that, paste that, replace that entire thing with, with this and uh, uncheck this AD IFD, click on next, then copy and paste your username and password like this. And you can save the password by checking this, click on next. And you should be able to, okay, I need to enter my password again. Okay, finally. So I need to name my environment. I'll name mine Loros Dev Environment. And I will uh, define the highlight. It's usually nice to click this set environment highlight. And depending on your environment, uh, you might want to check um, this, you might want to, to select a different border for your environment. So if you're working in production and you select this border, um, then within any project that you're using within this extra toolbox, you'll see this nice red border. So you will know that you're in production and that you need to be careful. So yeah, that's really useful. It saved myself um, a couple of times. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's really useful. Click on okay. And that should be, we should be good to go. You can click on finish. And this window will not disappear by itself. It appears so um, you can just click on OK. And you will get connected to the environment. Now, this thing is, again, uh, a bit too complicated to, to explain everything today. Uh, but what we will do is just click here on register, register new assembly. And here under select the assembly to load, just click on three dots and go to your plugin folder. Now I'm lucky and I'm already here, but you might not be. So just go to, to the folder and um, yeah, locate this DLL that you just built. So double click here and check that, that the plugin is actually here. So account capitalized plugin is in here. And then you can just click on register select plugins. And that's it. That looks really nice. And now what you also need to do. So we registered an assembly and right within the assembly, we also have the plugin. So this is your DLL. This is your plugin. Um, this is your plugin code. And now what we also need to do is right click and click on register new step. And hopefully this little window will connect a lot of terms that I used um, during the, the other sessions. So Finally, we can define the message, we can define the entity, we can set this to pre-operation just as we planned. So this little window kind of connects it all together, at least for me, um, I hope it does for you as well. So here under message, I will type in create uh, because I am registering this plugin to react when I create my new account. Under primary entity, I will enter account. And uh, if you are creating um, a plugin for any non-standard entity, you might need to find its logical name. And one of the easiest ways to do that is, let me open up some weird entity like newsletter subscription, what is that? So in here, um, w when you are somewhere around here, you can check the URL. And if you scroll a bit to the right, 
you will see a parameter that says etm equals and this before so yeah before the next ampersand is the logical name of your entity if i go back to accounts and scroll to the right again you can see i have this etm here equals and then account as well so that's the logical name but right now this is all that i need so that's fine i don't need the secondary entity i can leave filtering attributes as they are i only have one plugin if i had multiple plugins registered under the same message the same primary entry uh, entity and the same execution stage then this would tell kind of the priority of the plugins uh, how they should execute uh, but we only have one so one is fine uh, that's not an issue um, and I will choose pre-operation, of course. I can go ahead and click on register new step. And this, this, this message will appear, um, but this error is not really relevant for create message. So I'll just click on no, I do not care about performance now. Okay, I have my plugin all set. So now let's see if it actually works. I will go ahead and click on new and fingers crossed everything works. And let me just type in a new weird account name and let's click on save. And da -da -da -da, it doesn't work. Oh my God, why doesn't it work? Hmm, oh well. Well, let's go back to the plugin and fix it. And when you are in a situation like that and you don't have unit tests and all this fancy stuff which allow you to, um, to, to test the plugin, then um, there is still one method that can help you out of this gem and it's called exceptions. You already know exceptions, but in this case, exceptions come really in handy uh, to let you know what's, what's going on here. And when it comes to testing plugins with exceptions in Dynamics, there is a specific exception which uh, kind of pops up, uh, makes Dynamics pop up this really nice little window. Uh, you'll see just in a second. So I'll do throw new um, invalid plugin execution exception, that's the one. And inside here, I can put a little message like I'm here and a little smiley face because we're still holding strong. So um, that should be all fine. I'll right click on my plugins again, rebuild. And now I will go back to um, extra toolbox, right click on the assembly and click on update. I will select my assembly again update and then go back to dynamics and I'll create a new account again and just type in a dummy name again and click on save. Oh, something is happening. Oh my God. So happy. I'm here. At least something is happening. At least it's broken. Now you know that, that you made, you, you, you did at least something right. So it looks like we come here, but let's try and move this error message below the first test. Maybe we did the, um, the, the, the condition wrong. Um, and instead of I'm here, I'll just do I'm here too. Hey, hey, another smiley face. This will just tell us if this, if this condition is correct. Um, just right click on the plugin again, rebuild, go back to extra toolbox. And then now we can use this fancy button. Um, and I already have my path here, so I don't need to click the three button, the three dots again, load assembly, update selected plugins, and let's try it again. So new account, this card changes, blah, 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 save. And it looks like we don't get the exception. And that means that something is wrong here. So um, something is wrong with this condition here. And I can already tell you that I can see one mistake and you probably do too. So context.inputparameters.contains key target, this is true so we have a target here inside the input parameters so we should just invert um, the, the condition and that should hopefully work and just 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 in this case i will keep the the the, the exception here go to solution explorer um, rebuild go back update load update okay go back to crm save Okay, please do something. <laughs> um, let's do new account name um, and save. I'm here too. So it looks like the, the condition was indeed incorrect. And now I can comment out this exception here. Um, again, 
right click, rebuild, uh, update, load assembly, update, OK, and try to save it again. Dun, da, da, da. We succeeded. It's so nice to see it all uppercase. So that's that's what the plugin did for us. So it took the account name, um, took whatever uh, gibberish we put in here, and it just uppercased everything. And that kind of concludes this episode. I'm so happy that the plugin works. Yay. <laughs> um, I hope you are too. And we will see each other in the next tutorial. And um, I have some explanations. Like I have some explaining to do. And I hope you agree. Um, in the next tutorial, I will just explain what the heck is happening behind the scenes. Um, and, and what is this plugin boilerplate and all this fancy stuff. Um, in there. So if you're interested, and it looks like you are because you are already at the sixth tutorial, um, then consider subscribing and see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.